Welcome to the story of us, the story of humankind. Our story begins around 7 million years ago with the last common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees. From this shared origin, two distinct branches arose, the Panina branch, which ultimately led to modern chimpanzees and bonobos, and the Hominina branch, the path that led to us humans. The Panina branch provides a vital context to our own lineage, including our closest living relatives. First, Pan Paniscus, the bonobo known for its peaceful and matriarchal societies. Next, Pan Troglodytes, the common chimpanzee, with subspecies like Pan Troglodytes schweinfurthii, eastern chimpanzee, Pan Troglodytes troglodytes, central chimpanzee, and Pan Troglodytes varus, western chimpanzee. These species share over 98% of their DNA with us, powerfully reminding us of our deep connection to the animal kingdom. Their existence underscores the relatively small genetic changes that can lead to significant differences in behavior and morphology. On the Hominina branch, the first tentative steps toward what we recognize as humanity began. One of the earliest figures on this path is Sahelanthropus chidensis, appearing around 7 million years ago. Around 6 to 8 million years ago, Aurorin tugenensis showed signs of bipedalism, a crucial adaptation. Then came Artipithecus cadaba and Artipithecus ramidus, around 5.8 to 4.4 million years ago, continuing to evolve, walking upright, and adapting to new environments. These early hominins were pioneers, navigating a changing world and paving the way for future generations. By 4.2 million years ago, the Australopithecus genus emerged. These early hominins were fully bipedal and lived in Africa. Among the earliest was Australopithecus anamensis, followed by Australopithecus afarensis, famously represented by the fossil Lucy. The genus exhibited diversity, with Australopithecus barlgazali, Deirometa, and Prometheus showcasing different adaptations. Evolution continued within the genus. Australopithecus garhai and sediba show evidence of tool use and dietary changes, including more meat in their diet. These advancements mark a crucial turning point, highlighting the increasing importance of technology and resourcefulness. Living alongside the Australopithecines was Kenyanthropus platyops, around 3.5 to 3.3 million years ago. With its flat face and unique features, it suggests that multiple hominin species coexisted, each adapting to different ecological niches. This coexistence highlights the complexity of the early hominin landscape. Around 2.7 million years ago, the Paranthropus genus emerged. These robust hominins had powerful jaws and teeth, adapted for chewing tough plants. Including Paranthropus ethiopicus, robustus, and boise, these species thrived for over a million years before eventually disappearing. Their specialized diet and eventual extinction illustrate the risks of overspecialization in a changing environment. Around 2.4 million years ago, the Homo genus appeared, marking the beginning of our direct lineage. One of the first species in this genus was Homo habilis, the handyman, one of the first to use tools. This species, living 2.4 to 1.4 million years ago, represents a significant leap in cognitive and technological abilities. Simultaneously, Homo rudolfensis, around 1.8 million years ago, coexisted with Homo habilis and had a larger brain, suggesting a diversity of early human species. Also existing around the same time, Homo gautengensis, living 1.9 to 0.6 million years ago, shows the complexity of early human evolution in South Africa. These overlapping species offer a glimpse into a world where different human-like beings competed and coexisted. During the Middle Pleistocene, multiple human species coexisted, each adapting to different environments. One important species during this time was Homo ergaster, living 2 to 1.3 million years ago, one of the first to leave Africa, spreading into Eurasia. This species is often considered a direct ancestor of later humans. Ada, ting to different environments. Homo erectus, living 1.9 to 0.2 million years ago, was the first hominin to have a truly global presence, from Africa to Asia. Their ability to control fire and create more advanced tools marked a turning point in human evolution. One of the earliest examples of this migration out of Africa is Homo georgicus, found in Georgia and dating back 1.6 million years. Evidence shows Homo antecessor, living around 1.2 million years ago in Spain, provides clues about early human migrations into Europe. 
This species may have been a common ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans. A likely ancestor of both Neanderthals and modern humans was Homo heidelbergensis, living 500,000 to 400,000 years ago. This species had a larger brain and more advanced tools, indicating a significant leap in cognitive abilities. Expanding the reach to East Asia on the island of the Philippines was Homo luzonensis, dating back 67,000 to 50,000 years ago, adds to the diversity of human species in Southeast Asia. Their unique features suggest a complex evolutionary history in the region. Homo sepronensis, living around 500,000 to 350,000 years ago, represents a possible evolutionary link between Homo antecessor and later human species like Neanderthalensis. This complex web of species highlights the challenges of tracing a direct line of descent with many branches and dead ends along the way. There was Homo daliensis, living 250,000 to 200,000 years ago. With a combination of primitive and modern traits, it adds complexity to the story of human evolution in this region. By 400,000 years ago, Homo neanderthalensis dominated Europe and Asia. The Neanderthals, living 400,000 to 40,000 years ago, were highly adapted to cold climates with robust bodies and large brains. They created sophisticated tools, used fire, and even buried their dead, showing signs of complex social behavior. Genetic evidence shows that the mysterious Denisovans, known from DNA evidence, lived in Siberia around 40,000 years ago. They interbred with both Neanderthals and modern humans, leaving a genetic legacy in some populations today. And in China, there was Homo saichangensis, dating back 40,000 to 20,000 years ago. Represents another branch of our evolutionary tree, showing the widespread diversity of human species during this period. This period represents a critical turning point with the emergence of our own species and the eventual disappearance of our close relatives. Farther away, on the island of Flores, was Homo floresiensis, the hobbit, lived on the island of Flores until 15,000 years ago. This small-bodied species likely evolved from an earlier Homo erectus population, adapting to island life. Finally, Homo sapiens emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago. One of the earliest of our species, Homo helme, around 260,000 years ago, shows traits intermediate between Homo heidelbergensis and Homo sapiens. It may represent a transitional phase in our evolutionary lineage. Early form of our species, Homo sapiens adaltu, an early form of modern humans, appeared in Africa around 100,000 years ago. It wasn't long before Homo sapiens by 70,000 years ago, modern humans began to spread out of Africa, eventually colonizing every continent. Today, we are the last surviving species of the hominin lineage, but our evolutionary journey is far from over. While we stand alone now, it's crucial to remember the many other human species that once shared this planet. Our evolutionary tree is a testament to the resilience and adaptability of life. From a common ancestor with chimpanzees to the diverse species of hominins that once walked the earth, our story is one of survival, innovation, and connection. Thank you for joining us.